The Men's Answer to the Women's Petition Against Coffee Vindicating their own performances and the virtues of that liquor from the undeserved aspersions lately cast upon them by their scandalous pamphlet, published anonymously in London in 1674. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patrick Wallace The Men's Answer to the Women's Petition Against Coffee LibriVox Coffee Break Collection Number 6 Could it be imagined that ungrateful women, after so much laborious drudgery both by day and night, and the best of our blood and spirits spent in your service, you should thus publicly complain? Certain we are that there never was age or nation more indulgent to your sex. Have we not condescended to all the methods of debauchery? Invented more postures than Aratine ever dreamed of? been pimps to our own wives, and courted gallants even with the hazard of our estates, to do us the civility of making us not only contented, but most obliged cuckolds. Is he thought worthy to be esteemed a gentleman that has not seven times passed the torrid zone of a venereal distemper, or does not maintain at least a brace of mistresses? Talk not to us of those doting fumblers of seven or eight hundred years old. A lark is better than a kite. And cock-sparrows, though not long-lived, are undoubtedly preferable for the work of generation before dull ravens, though some think they live three hundred years. That our island is a paradise for women is verified still by the brisk activity of our men, who with an equal contempt scorn Italian padlocks and defy French dildos, knowing that a small dose of nature's quintessence satisfies better in a female limbeck than the largest potion infused by art. Let silly sits complain never so much that Madame Money is dead and buried. We dare appeal to all the commissioners of Whetstone's Park, the suburb runners and Moorfield's night walkers, if ever they had better trading. Nay, have we not forced languishing nature by preparations of cantharides, smiced meats, anchovies, cullises, jelly broths, lambstones, diacetyrion, bononia sausages, etc., all to answer the height of your amorous passions, and prevent the pitiful lechery of an artificial trangin? Have we not, with excess of patience, borne your affronts, been sweated, purged, fluxed between two feather beds, flogged, jibed, and endured all the rest of the devil's martyrdoms? And will you still offer to repine? Certainly experienced Solomon was in the right when he told us that the grave and the womb were equally insatiable. But why must innocent coffee be the object of your spleen? That harmless and healing liquor, which indulgent providence first sent amongst us at a time when brimmers of rebellion and fanatic zeal had intoxicated the nation, and we wanted a drink at once to make us sober and merry. Tis not this incomparable settle brain that shortens nature's standard, or makes us less active in the sports of Venus, and we wonder you should take these exceptions since so many of the little houses, with the Turkish woman straddling on their signs, are but emblems of what is to be done within for your conveniences, mere nurseries to promote the petulant trade, and breed up a stock of hopeful plants for the future service of the Republic in the most thriving mysteries of debauchery, there being scarce a coffee-hut but affords a tawdry woman, a wanton daughter, or a buxom maid to accommodate customers. And can you think that any of which frequent such discipline can be wanting in their pastures or defective in their arms? The news we chat of there you will not think it impertinent when you consider the fair opportunities you have thereby of entertaining an obliging friend in our absence. And how many of us you have dubbed knights of the bullfeather whilst we have sat innocently sipping the devil's holy water. We do not call it so for driving the cacidamon of lechery out of us, for the truth is, it rather assists us for your nocturnal benevolences by drying up those crude, flatulent humours, which would otherwise make us only flash in the pan without doing that thundering execution which your expectations exact. We dare appeal to experience in the case. Coffee is the general drink throughout Turkey and those eastern regions, and yet no part of the world can boast more able or eager performers than those circumcised gentlemen who, like our modern gallants, own no other joys of heaven 
than what consists in venereal titillations. The physical qualities of this liquor are almost innumerable, and its virtues, if you will believe pointing, able to outnoise the quackville of an all-healing doctor, when your kindness at the close hug has bestowed on us a virulent gonorrhea. This is our Catholicon, ens nature, and aqua tetrachymagogon is an ass to it. Tis base adulterate wine and surcharges of muddy ale that in feeble nature makes a man as salacious as a goat and yet as impotent as age, whereas coffee collects and settles the spirit, makes the erection more vigorous, the ejaculation more full, adds a spiritual essency to the sperm and renders it more firm and suitable to the gusto of the womb, and proportionate to the ardours and expectation too of the female paramour. As for our taking tobacco, you have no reason to object, since most of your own sex are so well skilled in managing a pipe, and if you find that of your husband's to be naught, tis his natural infirmity, or your own perpetual pumping him, not drinking coffee, is the occasion of the defect. And therefore let such Tom Farthings be forbidden the decoction of the rare Arabian berry, and condemned everlastingly with the rest of Doolittle's congregation to the carrying of glister pipes for the use of the well-effected sisterhood. You may well permit us to talk abroad, for at home we have scarce time to utter a word for the insufferable din of your ever-active tongues. The foolish extravagances of our lives are infinitely outdone by the wild frolics of yours. Till noon you lie abed, hatching concupiscence, then having paid your adorations to the ugly idol in the glass, you descend to dinner, where you gormandise enough at one meal to famish a town besieged. After that you are called out by a cousin, and hurried out in his honour's coach, whose jogging serves as a preparative to your lechery, away to the playhouse, where a lascivious dance, a bawdy song, and the petulant gallant's tickling of your hand having made an insurrection in your blood, you go to allay it with an evening's exercise at the tavern. There you spend freely, yet being robbed of nothing we can miss, home you come in a railing humour, and at last give us nothing for supper but a buttered bun. Cease then for the future your clamours against our civil follies. Alas, alas, dear hearts, the coffee-house is the citizen's academy, where he learns more wit than ever his granum taught him, the young gallant stage where he displays the wardrobe of his excellent no parts. Tis the non-con's bull-baiting, the newsmonger's exchange, the fool's business, the knave's ambuscade, and the wise man's recreation. Here it is where we have the sparkling cider, the mighty mum, and the back-recruiting chocolate. Tis coffee that both keeps us sober, or can make us so. And let our wives that hereafter shall presume to petition against it be confined to lie alone all night, and in the daytime drink nothing but bonny clabber. End of The Men's Answer to the Women's Petition Against Coffee Published anonymously in 1674 Read by Patrick Wallace